Joining me right now is a special guest, Keith Smith. This is Danielle's fiance who tried desperately to direct cops to the right location. Keith, thanks for being with us. Keith, when you first got the call from Danielle, what did you what did you think she had pocket dialed you? What did she say? What could you hear in the background? Well, I, I can't be 100% sure it was her. I mean, now with hindsight, I'm pretty sure it was. But it, I couldn't hear anything. It just happened to be about the time that she would normally call when she was leaving work, and it was just a scuffle. It, you couldn't make anything out. I mean, I could I could make out voices, but I couldn't tell what anybody was saying. Do you have Star 69? Could you have dialed it back to see if it was her? I could have, but that didn't cross my mind because at that point, you know, you don't yeah. think the worst is happening. You just think that, okay, you just get some weird phone call. Yeah, you but, just I mean, think after, you got a call where someone might have pocket dialed you, but you said you think you heard a scuffle in the background and voices. What kind of voices, male or female? All, it was a female voice, and the only word I could make out was kitchen. Kitchen. Everybody with me is Keith Smith. This is Danielle's fiance. He receives what sounds like a pocket dial around the time his fiance is headed home from work. She never makes it home. Then a tip leads police to an isolated dumpster where her body has found multiple stab wounds. Keith, as the evening unfolded that evening, after you got this phone call, it just sounded like somebody pocket dialed you. You didn't think anything about it. When did you first realize something was very, very wrong? Well, after I got that call, I was, you know, calling her and texting her on my cell phone, just trying to make, see if that was her, see what's going on. Um, you know, maybe they had to work later, whatever. And um, as time kept going on, you know, you start to get worried, but you certainly don't think anything like this happened. But um, right before I called 911, I called her one last time, and her phone went straight to voicemail, and that's when it started clicking that something was really wrong. When you first learned that police had honed in on this guy, Mark Cox, a convicted felon who had held people up at his last restaurant where he worked, the Sonic, what did they tell you about him? I didn't get a whole lot of background from him initially. I think it was only because, you know, it's, everything was so fresh and they were still trying to get information. So I really didn't get a whole lot of background on him except that he worked at the Flying Biscuit with Danielle. It wasn't until later on that I learned more about him. Keith, was the baby that Danielle was carrying, was it a boy or a girl? Do you know? Well, the medical examiner said it was too early to decide, but Danielle and I were convinced it was a boy. Keith, how did you reach the decision to bury her in her wedding dress? It was a uh, combined decision with her family and myself. Uh, the place where she tried the dress on actually donated the dress, so that's um, we had to do it that way. I mean, that's the, that was the only thing that could come into our minds of how to do it. Keith, what do you have to say to lawyers like Manuelian that suggest the baby didn't equal a person? and there should be no sentence in relation to its murder. Well, when your two-month pregnant fiancé is murdered, you'll change your mind.